for joining us again and really appreciate your feedback your comment and I hope this message encourages you and uh, what well, can I ask you to please subscribe to our channel it just enables us to get the love of God to as many people as possible um, this morning I want to talk about a, how a newspaper cutting changed the trajectory of my life how a newspaper cutting changed the trajectory of of my life uh, but before I do tell you a story about that can I just uh, build on um, the Lord's my shepherd the few weeks ago I started the, um, um, the the sermon and I just want to build on that and continue from that uh, Psalms 23 to it makes me to lie down in green pastures which we talked about last week but the second part of the verse it leads me beside the still waters it lets me rest in green pastures and it leads me to calm water and i want to talk about god leading us beside the still waters or the calm waters i'll let you, i'll tell you a story about the newspaper cutting in 2002 after working for a company for four years i uh, enjoyed working at the company but unfortunately the salary wasn't uh, uh, adequate for us and so uh, and I wanted a job that was more close to my qualification as a contracts manager and uh, so I, I became restless in the job uh, they were as I said a good company but I became restless in the job and I started to look for work uh, in the Tweed Coast or the Gold Coast and I couldn't find any in, in a big building company that did commercial building and high rises, etc. And uh, so um, I started to uh, look for work um, um, elsewhere in Brisbane. And uh, I started to buy the newspaper week after week just uh, to make sure that I would get work. As, as you could understand, 18 years ago, uh, you know, uh, um, finding work on the internet isn't as as popular as it is now so we had to buy newspapers and uh, and and read the uh, classified ads for jobs and um, I continued this program process for a few months and uh, and week after week uh, I, I would uh, um, uh, apply for work or at that stage perhaps there was not many vacancies but whenever there was I would apply for work um, only to be turned down obviously that discouraged me and we decided, uh, and then one day I became so uh, sort of uh, fed up with that uh, quest for a new work. I just said, oh, whatever will be, will be, and just let it go. And um, so I stopped applying. I stopped buying the newspapers. I stopped uh, uh, applying for work in Brisbane. I just said, we'll just continue. And we committed that to prayer and asked the Lord to lead us, to guide us, to help us, and, and just be at peace with it. One day, my daughter, Vinal, who was studying at QUT University in Brisbane, she came down and uh, and she brought a newspaper, a Saturday newspaper. Uh, as I said, I'd stopped buying the newspapers, and she uh, came down uh, home to visit uh, uh, with her friend. And uh, she was just here for the day, and she brought the newspaper. I look at it and I think how unreal this whole experience was. And she brought the newspaper and there was an advert for a company that was based in Brisbane that was uh, opening a branch in Tweed Eds, exactly where we live. And anyway, um, I didn't think much of it. I thought, ah, oh, maybe, not, you know, um, uh, I've tried so many times and maybe I'll just let it go. But nevertheless, I uh, took a, a, a scissors and I, I took the uh, um, um, uh, article out that that advert out and I kept it to follow it up and then I didn't say anything to Vinel I just put the paper back she took the paper with her back to Brisbane and I had the cutting and then towards the end in the evening when we connected again she said oh dad did you take a cutting out of the newspaper I said oh yeah I did it was an advert for a job and as it happened I responded to the advert I followed it up 
and uh, and basically I got the job and it was a good company it is a good company uh, um, I worked there for 11 years as contracts uh, manager and uh, and the last seven years I've been uh, appointed as their pastoral carer and chaplain um, I couldn't have asked to write the script more better it was so uh, amazing how that newspaper uh, uh, cutting changed the trajectory of my life and I began to think about it that the circumstances around that cutting and how it all happened was like it was a, a miraculous experience something that God was leading me and I believe that's a very um, illustrative of the verse I'm going to share today he leads me beside the still uh, waters um, and, 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 and so I want to just break down the verse in three uh, points. He leads me beside the still waters. Point number one, uh, he leads me. You know, I love that. He leads me. He doesn't drive me. He doesn't push me. He doesn't uh, drag me. He doesn't coerce me, but he leads me. The Lord will fitly lead and gently lead you to what is always best for you. When he leads you, you will always come to calm waters and find true rest for your soul. Um, uh, Isaiah 40 verse 11 in the NIV says, He tends his flocks like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Let's look at another verse. Um, uh, Isaiah 49 10 in the New King James Version says, they shall neither hunger nor thirst, neither neither heat nor sun shall strike them. For he who, he who has mercy on them will lead them. Even by the springs of water, he will guide them. You know, when you are being led by the good shepherd, you are sure to have his best. And that means your best. Uh, Psalms 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and love follows me all the days of my life. Can I encourage you today, just there, will you let the shepherd lead you today? Sometimes we're all like sheep um, that go astray and we want to go our own way. And before we know it, we get caught in situations that are unpleasant and 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 we can avoid that if we let God lead us. Let me illustrate this. When you're going on to a destination or journey, um, it's like you're getting on the airplane and you're telling the pilot of the airplane you're flying in, move over, I will drive. And because you don't know the plane instruments, you don't know how to fly, then you're not sure where you're going to uh, uh, um, go. Worse still, the question is, will you be able to get there? When you, when you try to lead yourself, it's like you want to tell the pilot, I'm going to drive the plane. Most of the time, most of the time, we don't like to be led because we think we can do it better. Really? Can we really do it better? Can we really do it better than God who created the universe and who always wants the best for us? I doubt much. Um, why lie to ourselves? Why don't we let him, why don't we let God be the captain of, of our of our destiny and let him take us to our destination why don't you just relax chill as you do on the airplane watch some movies and wait for him to take you to your destination it took me a, a long time uh, to let go but i know now god is leading me i get a sense of peace that he guides me when i move in peace then i know god is on it when i move in peace i know god is on it when god is on it is in it. Uh, the things that I desire happen very much so without my effort. Yes, I, I do have to make decisions, but when he leads me, it's not a lot of effort. It's easier than I, than I could do it on my own. The thing is pivotal. Whatever happens becomes a game changer. Just like 
as I said, this newspaper cutting was pivotal to my life. The last 18 years I've loved working for this company and it is pivotal. It has brought us uh, success. It has brought us riches uh, or good living. And I'm still engaged there helping uh, uh, young men and, and, and women just to uh, live a better life. And it's a game changer. Psalms 37, 23, some of my favorite verses. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord and he takes care of every details of his life. As, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's what happens when God leads you. All the details of your life will be sorted out and you will be directed in your path. Let me give you point number two. Still, the reason why the shepherd leads the, the uh, sheep to still waters, there's two reasons. A shepherd would never lead his sheep to rapidly flowing water. It would be too dangerous and uh, noise scares the sheep. And because of the swiftness of the flow, the sheep are frightened and they do not drink when they are frightened. Um, the shepherd is aware of the weakness of the sheep. Sometimes a shepherd will channel the water that is fast flowing into a diverted place and he will put rocks around uh, that uh, water that is re-diverted so that the, sh the sheep could drink without any fear. Sheep don't drink much, but when they drink, uh, they want to drink that little without any fear. The shepherd understands the sheep's fears and to accommodate those fears, he will make fast flowing waters become calm waters. Jesus knows all about your struggles. He knows about your weaknesses. He knows about your fears and he doesn't laugh at your fears or your weaknesses, but he desires to help you. When, when life is like a fast flowing river, Jesus would divert that into a calm uh, uh, channel of water so you can drink from there without any fear. Romans 8 1 says, There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus or those who live in union with Christ. There is no condemnation. Jesus doesn't come look down upon you or condemn you. Another reason for still waters, running waters can be too strong and sheep are not good swimmers. The sheep is a very woolly animal and what happens to wool in water? It becomes heavy. It makes the sheep heavy when they get stuck in, uh, in, in deep waters and they sink and drown. Some of you are drinking from unfamiliar sources and instead of quenching your thirst or, or quenching your thirst, sorry, you are, you are drowning yourself. God doesn't want this for your friend. Your shepherd longs to lead you to a place of rest to a place of safety, to a place of repose, to a place of trust, to a place of confidence, a place where you can rely on him and focus on him without anything that will distract you. So he takes you to where the water is pure, clear and almost motionless so that you can refresh yourself in him. It's a place where you can slow down, where you can be quiet and still with him and experience his deep, love and experience it intimately. Uh, he wants to take the heavy load from your life and replace it with his everlasting peace and rest. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a promise Jesus makes for you, the good shepherd of your, of your life. He says, come to me and when you're weary, when you're heavy laden, when you're burdened, come to me and I will give you rest. And the point number three is about the waters. Water, as we know, is an important part of life in everyone, for everyone. Last week we said our good shepherd uh, leads us to a place of rest and repose. But he also leads us to a place where we can quench our thirst. That's part of life. We need to quench our thirst. Without water, one cannot survive for very long. Water is a necessity for life. And without it, we would die. I believe for uh, uh, the, the still waters resemble uh, the influences and grace of God's Holy Spirit. His, His Holy Spirit attends to you like water to cleanse you, to refresh you, to regenerate you, to cherish you and make you enjoy your life. You heard of the saying, still waters run deep. Uh, the waters that the shepherd leads you 
are the still waters that run deep and the Holy Spirit works in the deepness of your soul. You, the Holy Spirit will work in your heart differently to how he works in your neighbors. And therefore your neighbor might not even know the divine stillness of God's Holy Spirit in your heart as you experience him. And, uh, and, and as you go through that encounter with God's Holy Spirit, uh, it might be pouring into your heart like still waters and your neighbor might not have any understanding of that. The Holy Spirit does not come with pomp nor trumpet. He does not come with any drowning but comforting. And he does not come with any fear but with blessed assurance. God's still waters do not bring fear but love power and strength of mind. He's not a violent person, but gentle as a dove. He reproduces in your life love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, patience, kindness, and self-control. And I want to encourage you here today, if you don't have an experience with God's still waters, the waters of the Holy Spirit, uh, you can have that today. So as I conclude, imagine you having a life of green pastures, and still waters forever. What bliss it will be. Uh, green pastures and still waters. And you know, as I said, the shepherd wants to lead you there. You might not lead yourself there, but the shepherd of your soul wants to lead you there. Imagine you'll be at the top of your game. Imagine every decision you make is the right one and a profitable one and a productive one. Imagine a place of everlasting rest, repose, a place of trust, a place of confidence, a place where you can rely on him and focus on him without anything that will distract you. Imagine all this. You can have it and more. Only you need to let him lead you. He wants the best for you. He is with you all the time. He is with you, leading you to give you advantage over the, the messiness of life. He's watching over you, my friend, but let him lead you to green pastures. Let him lead you to still waters. There you will find true rest for your soul. I hope this message encourages you. Let the Lord lead you to still waters. I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning. If you don't know Jesus, why don't you let him lead you to still waters? And if you haven't received him as your Lord and Savior, why don't you make him Lord of your life? You will find that it will always lead you to still waters. Can I pray with you? So Father, we praise you for the word. I thank you that you are our good shepherd, that you always lead us besides calm waters or still waters. I pray for anyone who's listening to this message today will be encouraged and they will in turn invite you to be Lord of their lives. Father, we thank you for that. And as a pray to you today that they would find peace and rest for their souls in Jesus name. Amen. And uh, if you're not well today, I always like to pray for you. We've been praying for so many people that are unwell and God has uh, miraculously touched them. So let me pray with you. Father, we thank you for those that are unwell. I do pray for those that uh, reach out in faith through this prayer that you will just touch them and they will feel so much better in Jesus name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. Mm -hmm.